Persecuted by humankind, beastmen were forced into the dark woods of Duskmoon Forest. Only one managed to stand up against the oppression. He became king. Under his rule, the beastmen created the kingdom of Ferolia. There he and his kin waited for a chance to get revenge on the humans who drove them away. Hee <laughs> hee. Well, well, if it isn't his furry majesty. Grrr. Finally, the time is upon us. With the coming shift in the world's mana power, now's the perfect opportunity to get back at those nasty humans. <laughs> Do I know you? How silly of me. They call me Gormand, Death Devourer. Our goals are the same, for I hate humankind as much as you do. May I offer you some unsolicited help? Outsiders and help are unwelcome. Be gone. No, wait. I'll leave, but if you change my mind, my dark spells and I are always at your service. Wait. I'll give you one chance. Oh, I shan't waste it. Tell me what you would have me do, and consider it done. Kevin was the one and only son of Ferolia's king. The young boy's human mother had long since abandoned her child, leaving him to be raised by the beastmen. Kevin never conked connected with others due to the hardships of his childhood. He was raised as his father's successor, trained to fight from his infancy. One night, the young prince came across a slain mother wolf and her living pup Carl. Finding a true friend in the affectionate wolf, the boy's frozen heart began to thaw. Hey guys, Blimager here. Welcome back to more Trials of Mana. For today's episode, instead of continuing on with the main story, I thought I would give you guys the full backstory for Kevin instead of the uh, slight flashback that we got when he joined us. Hmm. Huh? Sleep good. Huh, Carl? Orf, orf! Ah, <laughs> What was that yap for, Carl? Tiny, but still a wolf. Here, like this. We're like you and me. A wolf who acts like a dog. A beastman with human blood in my veins. And neither of us got a mom. Aroo. Don't worry, Carl. Got you. And I'll protect you, since your mom can't now. Woof. All right, so here we are, hanging out with our little pup. I mean, I think we can all relate to this. Who doesn't love to have a little pupper? Just running through the woods with a little puppy friend. Ain't nothing gonna go wrong here. Grrr, Carl, what's wrong? Stop, what are you doing, Carl? And he transforms into a monster. But what are we supposed to do here? We we can't attack Carl. I mean, we just said we would protect him. I mean, there's gotta be a way to get out of here, right? Right? Maybe back the way we came. Nope, it's a dead end. But I can't do it. I just I can't attack Carl. Carl, please stop! No! Uh, stop! Body's moving on its own. I'm I'm not controlling this at all. Like, I just set my controller down on the floor. You cannot stop this from happening.
bro. No, 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 Carl, Carl. How did this happen? Carl's grave. Unable to resist his beastman instincts, the boy transformed and attacked his only friend. Kevin made a small grave for Carl by the flower patch they'd often visited together. Racked with guilt, there he wept for his lost friend. So, so sorry, Carl. Kevin didn't know how long he wandered the forest, but eventually he made it back to the palace. But nothing was the same. Carl couldn't save him. Couldn't stop me. Beastman blood. But why did I transform? Why then? And now we are given control of Kevin. You don't look so good. Yeah, that's what happens when you kill your best friend. Long ago, beasts feared fire, but beastmen are different. We know how to handle fire. We know everything humans do. Just ask His Majesty the King. We ain't so different from humans, so why we gotta be outcasts, huh? We'll teach those humans what it's like. We will. Hear me out. My son says I'm going senile, but my eyes never failed me before. I swear, there are fewer moons in the sky. Don't you want to help drive out the humans? You know, Chart Moon Tower here in Dusk Moon Forest, right? There's supposed to be something in there keeping the whole area in darkness. So earlier when Gormand was approaching the king, uh, you may have noticed that a text box went by really fast. I actually had no control over the text in that area. Unfortunately, you'll have to pause the video if you want to see the entirety of that text box. You don't look so good. The mana goddess doesn't discriminate, so try offering up a prayer to her statue. You'll feel all better. Yeah, but I'm not going to save it. Ludgar's meeting with the palace guards to plan the invasion. Curse it all. I wanted to go with them. Hmm. This is a really cool area. Beastmen will finally be able to leave this gloomy forest and join the rest of the world. Why would you want to leave this forest? It's awesome. Little kitty cat there. There you are. Wait, where's Carl? I guess Kevin must have brought Carl to the palace with him regularly. Can't wait to invade the human world. All hail his majesty, our fearless leader. Whom, unless this new localization changes things, the game never actually states his name. However, there was a prequel released back in like 2008, I think, called Heroes of Mana. And in that game, the King of the Beastmen is actually a playable party member, and his name is Gauser. Wish I had your luck. Be careful of that girl, though. She can kick anyone's behind when she transforms. So I hear you're next in line for the throne. Look me up if you're ever in the market for a special someone to share it with, okay? Ooh, a little flirty. By order of the king, the beastmen forces are hereby sent out to take over human settlements. Our first target is the holy city, Windle. Yes, sir! Now is our chance to pay back the humans for what they've done. Once we take their holy city, we'll have already dealt a serious blow to those weaklings. 
Yeah! Long ago, beast feared fire. Oh. This guy says the same thing that other dude said. Do they all say the same things? Wow. Recycled text boxes. Basement, sound off. One, two, three, four, five, a hundred. Uh, that's not how math works. We'll be taking Jad. Then it's straight to Wendell. You hear that, Princeling? Your old man picked me to lead the Beastman to victory, not you. How does it feel to be a waste of space? <laughs> wow, that was mean. Like, why would you even say that, dude? Oh, hey, this is where we started. Neat. So let's see what's over this way. A stranger came to offer aid to our king. Where'd he come from? Where'd he go? Where did he come from? Hey, wasn't your mother a human? She abandoned you. Well, now's your chance to get back to the whole lot of them. Isn't that great? I mean... We may have just started the game with old Kev here, but I just don't get the feeling that he's got the same bloodlust that all of you do. Oh yeah, I did already come in here. Okay, nothing left but to go up here to the throne room. His Majesty is out. He left with that weird fellow that just showed up at the castle. Weird, huh? Okay. Huh? I hear something through this wall. I know that voice. Well done, Gormand. Ha ha ha! It's an honor to fulfill the wishes of the king! Were you impressed by my dark magic then? Corrupting the will of a tiny pup to attack my son is child's play. No matter, it induced his transformation as planned. With no attachments to keep him from training, my son will become a weapon. I have no more need of you. Leave. Wait, what? Be reasonable, your majesty. Grr, you beast! Action Kev on the scene. I guess Kevin's not interested in talking to him. He gets! He just... Stop right there, coward! Yes, use that hatred I see in your eye. Bend it to your will and let it fuel your beastman power. Never lose it. Shut up! Foolish boy, know your place. You called yourself Death Devourer, did you not? Yes, indeed, your majesty. I leave the matter of my son to you. Understood, sire. And we're back at the grave. Definitely need to check the statue, because don't want to go out and immediately die. Here we are in the forest. And it's nighttime, so that means we transform into a werewolf with considerable power. So I picked the two undisputed strongest DPS characters in the game from my party. Kevin is top dog. You! What'd you do to Carl? Give him back! Sp spare me! 
I was merely following his majesty's orders. Eh? Wait, I've come to you with an offer. Wouldn't you like to know how to bring your little Carl back to life? Huh? Farolian forces are on their way to Wendell as we speak. You need to find the Priest of Light who lives there. He knows how to bring back the dead. You lie. Does this look like the face of a liar? You cannot wait! Ludgar's guards have already left. If you dally, they may do away with the priest before you arrive. Where's... Wendell, where? Hehe, <laughs> it's this way, your highness. Make for Mentas, just outside of Duskmoon Forest. From there you can cross the sea to the city of Jad. Wendell is quite close to that location. Don't dawdle, or Ludgar will have complete control of Wendell before you even arrive. Try to stay out of his sight, okay? I shouldn't be seen here with you either. I'll take my leave. Alright. So, while the werewolf transformation is a little powerful, it is uh, slow to start up. Because you'll get that little transformation sequence every time you start combat at night. Man, it is just so worth it. Like, defense and attack are going through the roof here. Oh, hey, getting chocolate. That's actually a really good drop for this early in the game. We're still in the intro. Carl, wait for me. Priest and Wendell will tell me how to bring you back. Still my best friend, Carl. That coward is no father. He's why Mom left. Is she alive? Wanna see her. Kevin burned with hatred for his father and shame for the feral blood in his veins that made him deliver the final misguided blow to his only friend. As the Ferolian troops left the castle, the young prince was hot on their heels. He had to get to Wendell and ask the Priest of Light to bring Carl back to life. No one could know that the wheels of fate were already turning for Kevin, whose story had only just begun. I love this part. I can't find a boat, so I just start swimming. Ah. And that's Kevin's intro. But since I made it this far, I might as well bring him all the way to the point where he joined up with Hawkeye. It's actually quite short compared to Hawkeye's intro. But uh, like I said, Kevin and Hawkeye are the two top DPSers out of the six characters by far. It's because they both have two attacks. And Kevin, just because of his amazing stats and the werewolf transformation especially. And if it weren't for critical hits being broken, Hawkeye would probably even outdo Kevin. Because, man, you know you have a strong character on your hands when he's still second best with his main gimmick being broken. And here we are in Jad. Jad belongs to Ferolia. Don't resist and we may spare you. Ferolian forces have taken the town and closed the docks. Now my ship's stuck in the harbor until who knows when. So, much of things is largely the same here as it was when we were here with Hawkeye. Still have this girl sleeping in the bed. Over this way, we should still have Durin hanging out in the weapon shop. C 
cursing to himself that he can't buy a weapon. And up here should still be Reese looking for her little brother. I wonder what happens if I say the other option. Oh. Same thing. But what's different here is now Hawkeye is here in the pub. This town is caught up in a war it never wanted. Just like so many places in the world. Like my homeland. What is going on? Huh? Kevin, what are you doing here? Oh, I see. You're on a secret mission for the king. Don't worry. I won't say nothing. Good thing the beastmen are kind of dumb. So the only other thing that would be different here would be this. <laughs> Ach, yikes! Hmm, who's there? Where'd they go? Was that Kevin? Must be seeing things. Phew, close one. So you can't even approach Ludgar with Kevin. A little interesting, but uh, with little else to do, Kevin must rest until the evening. That sleeping animation, though, it's about how I sleep. So now it's nighttime and we can sneak out. Oh, I forgot that's the beach. So if we keep going this way, I think I'm just gonna slide past these rabbits. It's kind of nice that uh, your character faces monsters when you're walking around. So we need to head to Wendell. Well, Wendell's this way. Ah, oh, there's an invisible force blocking the way. And that is where our story for Kevin ends off until Hawkeye meets up with him. It's also where this episode is going to end for the day. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time as we continue our adventure with Kevin and Hawkeye.